The initial trial, actually, which was presented last year at ID Week, showed in among this very large uh, uh, population really low levels of urologic failure. 2.5% uh, in the patients that were actually switched to the single tablet DCF TAF uh, versus 2.1% that remained on their stable boosted PI regimen. So very low levels of virologic failure, virologic rebounds uh, during the 48 weeks of the, for the primary outcome. Here in the presentation that we presented, this was a post hoc analysis looking at subsets of patients uh, by age, gender, and race. And again, very consistent results over 48 weeks, very low levels of urologic rebounds as you slice and dice those subsets of patient populations. Uh, so for example, in age greater than 50, about a third of those patients coming in were age greater than 50. And again, they performed just as well as those age less than 50, as well as by, by gender, as well as by black versus non-black. There really wasn't anything surprising, again, given the low, low overall virologic failure rate, again, around 2, 2.5% uh, for both arms. There wasn't really anything surprising. In fact, even in the uh, tolerability profiles, uh, looking at some urinary pr parameters, looking at small molecular molecules that are freely filtered in the glomerulus, taken up in the proximal tubule, again, patients switched to TAF, those uh, urinary markers, biomarkers, actually decreased, showing uh, preserved integrity uh, of renal function. Bone mineral density actually increased a little bit uh, in those patients that were switched to the DCF TAF arm, again, given some of the properties of the TAF. And again, importantly, no virologic failures uh, that uh, would uh, lead to resistance. There was uh, one patient uh, in the interventional arm, DCF TAF, that was genotyped, no ARV resistance, three in the control arm, again, no resistance.